Today we are going over how to draw isomers. So just to review, an isomer is when you have the same chemical formula, but a different structure and therefore different properties. It's the structure that causes the properties to be different. So students notoriously have trouble drawing isomers. So I'm going to take you through step by step. So the first isomer is always a freebie. So if you wanted to draw the three isomers of C5H12, the first one is always the straight chain alkane, um, and it would be C5H12. These are all going to be, when we're done, C5H12. All right, and this one uh, would look like this, once it has all its H's. Now, the model kit it looks like that, so it's a little hard to see. I'll put it on there. So there's our model kit. Uh, it's five in a row. Don't worry about the fact that they kind of alternate like that. Um, the way we look at it in three dimensions, they all look like they're in a line. So we kind of look at it and draw it like that. But in reality, they are kind of staggered. I'm not going to get into that. So a common mistake that I see is for the second isomer, someone says, well, how do we have a different structure? So you'll see students do stuff like this a lot. I'll use my notepad and I'll get this. They'll be like, okay, well, what if I did this? There's four in a row. Well, there's my fifth, okay? Well, that would be like drawing this. So if I drew it this way, hard to see, but if I have my three and my four in a row and then I just point one down, that doesn't make it an isomer because all I have to do is just twist it back and it's still a straight chain. You could even draw something like this. That is also a straight chain because if you count them out, if it's, it's not about... Um, their shape, it's about how they're connected. These are all connected in a line or in a sequence. So these that I just drew are the same as the first one. They're no different. Okay, even if you were to go even more extreme and draw it like this, and you'd say, well, that has to be different. Well, look, one, two, three, four, five. I drew too many carbons, but. If you connected them like that, we're ignoring H's. That's still the same molecule. It's just connected. I just bent it. I'm just doing this. All I'm doing is just moving it around. So like you could draw it like that, almost like a, a bowl. That's still connected in a straight line as far as we're concerned because one, two, three, four, five. In order to make a isomer, what you have to do is disconnect a molecule and reconnect it some other place. So the way we do that is by literally disconnecting a carbon and reconnecting it somewhere else that is not on the main chain. All right, so this is the first isomer. So if you look at it, it might be a little hard to see. Maybe it's like that's a better angle. So if you look at it, it kind of looks like this. This is how it would draw in two dimensions. It would be four in a row, and then I go one in, and there's my extra carbon. So now if I were to put in all my H's, let's take a look. and we were to count them out, there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That's still C5H12, that counts as an isomer. So now let me show you all the mistakes that students make when drawing this isomer, right? Because then they say, well, what if I did this? So here's the original isomer that we drew, four in a row, one down. Well, then I see, well, what about this? These are the same thing, okay? Everyone, hopefully everyone can see that. These are the same isomers because if I just take this molecule and flip it, it's the same thing as the first one, which is the same thing as what I have drawn with all the H's in. So these are still the same molecule, okay? Let's do the next ones. I get this a lot. These are all the same molecule. All four of these are the exact same thing, just drawn in a different fashion, okay? Well, let's keep drawing it to show you all the variations that I get all the time with this. So here's the next one. Some people say, well, what about this? What about that? Well, all you have to do is take this carbon here and just rotate it down to be over here, right? That would be like 
me doing this. Well, what about this? This must be different. Well, no, it's still four in a row. One, two, three, four, right? It's hard to see, four in a row with one down. All I did was just bend my orientation to make it look different, but I didn't actually reconnect anything into a different fashion. All right, so this, these two, these two, all the same thing. You could even get more extreme and say, well, what about this? Still the same thing, because all I'd have to do is take this one and just rotate it down that way. Take this one, rotate it down that way to be straight, and now it's here and here, right? And I'm still at the original. Okay, the same thing with this thing. If I just take this one and rotate it there, now it's gonna be over there and it's the original. So this is really, uh, the issue here is really kind of like spatial orientation. These are all the same molecule. So what do you do to make another version? Well, here's the final version. Do the exact same thing that you did to the original. Disconnect one from the main chain and reconnect it somewhere else. So now we're here. So now this is the final version. And the way it's gonna look is it's gonna look like this. Three in a row, one up, one down. If we add all our H's, they're still C5H12, all right? Uh, the condensed formulas will be different. So this one, this original one would be that. This next one would be, and I'm gonna go left to right, uh, Okay, so this is this carbon right here because it only has one H directly connected and then the CH3 goes in parentheses because it's a branch and then there's your last CH3. And this last one, uh, there's two ways of doing it. You could do it like this. So here's carbon one and then here's carbon two. It has no H's directly connected to it. And then here's carbon, here's the branches that are connected. And then here's the final carbon. So that's one way of doing it. Because these branches are 100% the, are identical, the other way of doing it is this. This is the preferred way, because we take these two identical branches and just connect them there because of that. And so that's an easy way to do it. It only works if the branches are 100% identical. And then for naming these guys, uh, the naming's a little bit trickier, but let's take a look. Uh, naming them, well, this one's easy. This one's just called pentane. This one's not a pentane anymore. This is carbon one, this is carbon two, this is carbon three, this is carbon four. Notice the reason I started on this side and not the left is because the branch will be on carbon two. If I did it the other way and I made this one, two, three, four, the branch would be on carbon three, okay? And the rule says we want the lowest possible numbers we can get. And so obviously if there's a double bond or a triple bond, it gets priority, but there's none here. So then my branch gets, now my branch becomes the next most important thing. And so I want the branch or at least the first branch to be on the lowest possible number. So this would be carbon two. So this is called two, um, why did I write a C? Let's fix that. This is called 2-methyl-butane because it has a methyl group, a group of one carbon in length, on carbon 2 of the main butane chain. And then this one is going to be, doesn't matter if I number it this way, 1, 2, 3, or if I number it this way, 1, 2, 3, the branches are on carbon 2 either way. So this is going to be called 2, 2 Di methyl propane. So the reason I have two numbers is because there's 
dimethyl means two groups of one, and then the two and the two tell me where to find the two groups. They're both on carbon two, one up, one down. And so that's how we name these. I'm gonna do one more uh, video for drawing isomers and we'll go to a larger isomer and hopefully you'll uh, get a little bit more uh, practice with it. But we're gonna cut this video here and then we'll go to the back of this, which was where we're gonna draw a bigger isomer. And the bigger they are, the more variations they have or the more isomers they have. Today we're gonna be drawing the five isomers for C6H14. All right, so the first isomer is always a freebie. It's always the straight chain. This is what the straight chains look look like in 3D. In 2D, you're kind of looking at them like this, and then they are obviously more in a line. So to draw this one out, it's just gonna look like this. And they are going to be C6H14. And this is actually gonna be true for all of them. Okay, now again, I went, in this, I went into this in more detail. No matter how you draw this, if you were to draw it like, move it like this, and move it like this, and kind of make something like this even, that's still a straight chain as far as we're concerned because the way that they're connected, they're still connected in order, meaning one, two, three, four, five, six, it's still a chain. Okay, it doesn't matter how the chain bends or snakes or does whatever it does, that still counts as the same straight chain, all right? Now, the way you make a something different or an isomer is by disconnecting one from the end and then moving it in, typically one carbon in. And so now this, if I'll unfold it, uh, make it a little bit easier, this is something different. This is one, two, three, four, five in a row, and then there is a methyl group on the second carbon in from the branch. So this is an isomer. Now, the way we draw it is gonna look like this. So there's five in a row, and then it doesn't matter if I go up or down, there's my branch. Now, common mistakes that I get with this is again, this branch is the same as if I drew it like this. That's the same as that, just rotated. Which is the same as that. Which is the same as that. They're all the same. All I would do for the naming is I would number this carbon one, carbon two, and that would be two methyl. Call this carbon one, carbon two, two methyl. Call this carbon one, carbon two, that's two methyl. This is technically, this is carbon one, that's carbon two. Okay, so these are all the same. These are all two methyl, and then since they're five in a row, pentane. So no matter what you do, it's the same thing. And then again, if we go back to the model, it does not matter if I twist this thing up like this and say, oh, well, there's like a ring here and this thing. Nope, it's still one, two, three, four, five in a row. And on carbon two, there's a branch of one. So that's how this works. So you can't use that anymore. But here's the interesting part about a larger um, a hydrocarbon, right? We can get away with this. That is different, okay? And here's the reason why, if you haven't already figured it out. Whether you number it, from, number it from the right or the left, it doesn't matter. Now the methyl group is on carbon three. That would be the equivalent of me taking this methyl and moving it here. So now I've got, I've got five in a row with a methyl on carbon three, the middle carbon. So the problem is, if you put it on the first car, on the carbon two, well, if you put it on the first carbon, it's actually part of the straight chain, so it doesn't count as an isomer at all. If you put it on carbon two, it's fine, but remember, if you draw it up, you could draw it down, you could flip it this way, you could flip it this way. It's all the same thing, nothing's changed. But if I disconnect it and move it to carbon three, now it is uniquely different, because no matter how I rotate this, the, the methyl group will always be in the middle. So that does count as an isomer, all right? So be aware of that, that one is a, um, a very tricky scenario for that guy. Uh, what you're going to uh, find is that the reason we didn't do this in the five carbon, C5H12, was because five carbons is just too short and there is no 
extra variant. The larger the chain gets, the more often you can get away with just moving the methyl group down the chain and finding different versions. So now to get another version, what we have to do is we have to also disconnect another one from the main chain and reconnect it someplace else. Now, here definitely counts. This is four in a row, right? We have one, two, three, four, and then a methyl on two and a methyl on three. It doesn't matter if I call this two, three, or if I call this two, three, it doesn't make a difference which way I number it. So this is doing it again. So now I go to four in a row, and now I have a methyl here and a methyl here. Now, again, it does not matter if I draw them both down, both up, up, down, down, up doesn't make any bit of difference because in real life they rotate around that they get they're free to rotate around that carbon that they're disc that they're connected to they're not free to disconnect and reconnect someplace else but they are free to rotate in space all right and so there's your next one because it's one two three four it's two methyl groups instead of just one methyl group and then here's the final one and this is the trick um, since I have two methyl groups I can start playing around with where I move them, meaning this is different because this would be two and two, and then this is two and three. Now, common question you get a lot is, well, what about this one? What about three, three? Well, three, three is just two, two flipped. Okay, it's the same molecule. So, for example, this would be, if I reconnect them, this is the last one. As you can see, I've got my four in a row, and then I've got my two methyls here and here. And if I move them over to look like this guy, well, all I'm doing is this. So it's the same molecule. I haven't reconnected anything. So these are all the variations of uh, hexane. So that one's a little bit more. The more carbons you have, the more variation you have. All right, and so let's... Draw all our H's in. So there's all my H's. Again, to double check this and make sure these are done right, you're going to want to um, Make sure every carbon has four bonds and then count the number of H's that you have and make sure you have six carbons and 14 H's every single time and make sure all the carbons have four bonds. And once you've done that, you have done them all right. So now for the condensed, this should be pretty easy. So there's the first one, pretty simple straight chain. Uh, I'm always gonna condense left to right. That's the way I like to do it. Um, so even though I'm calling this, even though this has to be called carbon one because the methyl group is closer to this way or to this side, um, it wouldn't make a difference. If you drew it over here, you'd still call this carbon, you call this carbon one and it would still be two methyl in that case. But let's just, I'm, I'm just gonna do it left to right to make it um, uh, just to be consistent. But depending on where you put your methyl, you could have put it down, up, or on this carbon, two in on here, down or up. It's all the same thing to me. It's gonna be the same answer either way. Your condensed will be a little different, but that's fine. It's still correct. So there is, there we go. There's our final or our next one for the next one. CH3 and then We're missing an H there. And then for the next one. And then for the last one, I'll just go straight to the fastest answer. Made a mistake. So since carbon two has no H's directly connected, we just write the C to represent that one. Then we do our CH3. And since there's two identical groups, just put a two outside to save time. So there's our condensed formulas. And then the last part is the names. 
So the names can be a little tricky, so let's go over them. Uh, this one is hexane. Now with this next one, I'll number them completely. The main chain only has five carbons in a row, so it's going to be, and then on carbon two, there's a methyl group. So this is two methyl pentane. Since this one is moved, now this one is three methyl pentane. And for the last two, they are four in a row. So they're not even pentanes anymore, they're butanes. Okay, but since they have two methyl groups, they're gonna need two numbers. So this one is called two comma three dash di methyl butane. And this one would be two comma two dimethyl butane. We would never call this one three comma three because if we numbered from the other side, then it would be, um, it would be two two backwards. And so we always want the lowest possible number. Uh, and then this one, it doesn't matter which way I number because it's gonna be two three either way. And I don't, it doesn't matter if you call this methyl two or this methyl, methyl three, that doesn't matter because it's gonna be the same. So that's everything for drawing uh, slightly harder isomers. I don't think you'll ever have to draw anything, um, any isomer that's harder than this, but you could be asked to draw an isomer that has a double bond. And so also be aware, if you have a double or triple bond, the quick way to make isomers for those, obviously you can do all this reconnecting and adjusting the structure, but all you have to do is just move the double bond to a different location. If there is a true different location that isn't just some um, variation of the original location, and that counts as an isomer with double bonds. So those are the beginning, the first couple um, isomers of anything with a double bond are pretty easy. You just get to move the double bond around. And then you run into, now you then have to do all of this while accounting for the location of the double bond. So as soon as you go to an alkene, you start getting way more variation and therefore way more potential isomers that you can draw. So that's why we're never gonna do that. But I'm not saying that it's not outside of the realm of possibility. You could do it. It would just be, you'd have to pay a lot more attention to what's going on every with every potential isomer probability. But that's it for this video.